Thanks, Chikva. Well, so if you live in a city, you have a lot of restaurants that you can choose from, but there's a problem in that the rate of change in those restaurants and how quickly they turn over exceeds your rate of food consumption capacity. Um, they change too quickly, so I love two things. I love data and I love cheeseburgers, and I started thinking about how data could be used to help me find the best cheeseburgers before they were gone forever. <laughs> And I'm not alone in this. So this is the United States in beef space. That is <laughs> McDonald's in black and Burger King in red. And uh, Sonic is the little teasing bit of teal that is never actually anywhere nearby. And as we saw in our healthcare costs, uh, it's not just food, right? So geeks love cheeseburgers. This is my favorite chromium bug of all time. It is a fundamental flaw in the iconography of the cheeseburger. The cheese appears below the cutlet in the icon. This is serious. So my project actually begins here in New York in the West Village, and I was walking around one day and I saw a new restaurant and it was intensely boring. And it was boring because I thought it had to be the median West Village restaurant. It only had the same dishes as every other restaurant. So I started thinking, can I prove that? Uh, what data can I get? So I went to the internet and I borrowed a lot of data from our favorite menu and food rating sites. Uh, and I got together all of the menus for non-fast food restaurants in Manhattan. And so the first thing you do when you look in a new data set is you look for something you know, right? So this is Chinese food in New York City, and there it is, I found Chinatown. <laughs> so the next one, I'll see if anyone can guess what this is. More restaurants than Chinese restaurants. Right, so there are two dense clusters of Italian food in Manhattan. One of them is Little Italy. One of them is the nouveau Italian West Village place you take your mom when she comes to visit. And this last one, of course, is most relevant for those of us here today because it's near where we are geographically. Uh, there is the secret Hell's Kitchen Thai enclave. For some reason, there, that's the highest density of Thai food in Manhattan. Right, so let's get back to cheeseburgers. There are 5,247 cheeseburgers, and that's not counting all permutations and combinations. That is the base cheeseburger at every restaurant that offers a cheeseburger in Manhattan. So which one do we go get? There's a little bit of a decision paralysis here. So we need a little bit more data, not just where the cheeseburgers are, and we need to come up with an algorithm for selecting one. Uh, so to start, we need that definition of optimality of the cheeseburger. And if you read the literature, there's a lot of thinking around the meat to bun ratio. We already know the cheese goes above the cutlet. Uh, unfortunately, some of this data is a little bit hard to come by, so I settled on an algorithm that had three main input factors. Taking your current location as the first one, how far are you willing to go to get a cheeseburger? I know for some of this, this is very far, but you can query Dark Skies API and see how far you can go, given the current weather conditions, to get your cheeseburger. Right, so that's factor one. Factor two is price. You do not want to get ripped off. So this is the histogram of all cheeseburger prices. You want to be in that middle range between $8 and $16, and do not get fooled by the children's menu at the fancy steakhouses. <laughs> the third thing is quality, and so I approximated that by searching Foursquare's Explore API for tips that said specifically get the cheeseburger, cheeseburger A+, plus, cheeseburger, 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 cheeseburger. And so, to validate the algorithm, you actually have to go out and try them. And I've been inflicting this on my friends and coworkers for the last few weeks, so sorry guys. Um, but it seems to work pretty well. So if you follow this model of proximity, price, quality, as decided by the community, you will end up very happy. Uh, depending on your starting point, you may end up in a very different place, and that's totally okay. <laughs> So there are two morals to this story. One is that the data is out there, and whatever frivolous and ridiculous question you're obsessed with, you can find something that will yet you look at it in a new and exciting way. Uh, and it doesn't have to be very hard. You can think of that data as a framework where you can look at a familiar place in a new way uh, and learn something interesting no matter what uh, you happen to be obsessing over at the time and how serious or frivolous it may be. Uh, the second moral is just that everybody loves cheeseburgers. Thank you.